Our next two wines come from uh, Etna, so we have another horizontal, mini horizontal, and Susan, uh, the first is the Biondi Otis Rosso. Yes, um, I mean, Etna, as we've already talked about, is really uh, super trendy at the moment. Uh, the hot, hot topic from a, a cooler area. Um, it's, it's such an intriguing, whenever you talk to any winemakers or grape growers there, there's always a sort of special light in their eyes when they're growing vines on Etna because the land is so distinctive. And, you know, if you haven't been there, it's one of the places you really should go to the vineyards. Um, so these wines are intriguing, lively, full of energy. Both, uh, both of these wines are really interesting, lively, alive wines. Also, um, last year, in last year's Master of Wine exam, there was an Etna wine, as well as a Barolo and a Chianti, and many people, almost, well, several people thought that the Etna wine could be Nebbiolo. So because of the, some elements of that liveliness, um, that sort of light, lighter body sometimes with that good acidity and a little uh, grippiness to the tannins. Um, so... Uh, Ciro Bionde is on the southeastern slopes. Utis is the name. And this was a very, uh, stemmed from a very modest um, desire, if you like. Um, it's based on the story of Odysseus, um, who, when the Cyclops was blinded, said, I asked him, What's your name? And he said, Nisuno. So nobody. Um, but they couldn't use that name, so they changed it to the Greek version of Utis. So really, they were saying, We're nobody but we just want to be here to celebrate this land and to restore the vineyards, really, of, of the family. Um, this is a field blend, so likely to be 80% Norello Mascalese and 20% Norello Cabuccio. And um, really, I think you see a lot of this liveliness and vitality in, in these wines. So a slight kind of delicate red fruits. You can see why people may think under pressure it has some connection with it because you've got that lovely delicate red fruit character as well. But plenty of tenacity and edge on the palate. So again, these long savory finishes, a, a bit of grip from the tannins, and you really feel that this wine can take on lots of different dishes. I think you could easily uh, mistake this for Nebbiolo, and I perfectly understand people who do, because, uh, you know, between the Burlotto today and this wine, many similarities, you know, the color is similar, the tanning structure is similar. I think maybe the, the Barolo is a little bit fresher in the aromatics, while this is slightly more Mediterranean, you know, you've got slightly more uh, dried fruits, uh, more savory notes, but uh, really there is, a, there is a communication. And it's fascinating to learn that several Barolo producers are now investing on Etna, buying vineyards or getting into joint ventures. One is Gaia, but for example, also Giovanni Rosso, an excellent producer from uh, Serra Lunga d'Alba. He's also starting production on Etna. Uh, so there's going to be uh, more, than, um, more than superficial contacts. And fascinatingly, uh, Sicily and Piemonte were united under the Savoy kings for a brief time in the 18th century. So there is a, even a cultural connection uh, between these two appellations, even though you know, it's uh, f uh, more than a thousand kilometers between the two.